Assalamualaikum and a very good evening everyone. I hope everyone is doing fine. My name is Saifullah and I will be the moderator for today's talk. I bid everyone a very warm welcome and we appreciate your efforts for clearing out your schedules to join us in this evening's talk. So we, before we begin, I would like to lay out some, ground, some general ground rules and instruction for today's talk. First, the audience must have their mic off at all times except during the Q&A sessions. Second, questions can be asked during the talk, but only through the chat box. And lastly, during the Q&A session, the audience may unmute their mic and ask questions to the speaker directly. So that's all the rules for and instructions. I hope everyone can cooperate to ensure this evening talks go smoothly. Thank you very much. Before we truly begin, I would like to go ahead and invite Muhammad Adlan to recite the dua, please. Amin, amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Thank you Adlan for reciting the dua. First of all, joining us today are some lecturers from our university as well as a very special guest, Adam Ikhwan from Andalusia Studio, which will be our speaker for this evening's talk. To start things off, I'm going to give a short introduction of our speaker, if you guys don't mind. Adam Ikhwan is one of the students from BSc 08 Studio Andalusia. His work is dedicated to the use of human body in architecture. The relationship between human flesh and architecture architectural flash by exploring the possibility of inhabitable architectural entities. This speculation of entities is designed to explore architecture as a living organism, exploring the potential of a growing architecture that mutually lives alongside human. I know you guys are already captivated by that, so without further ado, Checkmate Architectural Review presents you. Adam Ikwan from Andalusia Studio. All right, thank you very much for the MC introduction. Um, my name is Fleur Ikwan. Um, so today I'll be doing a talk session for uh, my uh, final year work. Um, so I'll be sharing my screen. <clears throat> Can you guys see it? Yeah, yes, we can. All right. Okay. So, um, good evening to everyone. Um, <clears throat> so today I'll be presenting my work, which is titled Growth, a Speculative Adaptations of Mycelium within Architectural Perspective. Um, essentially, my work is actually not um, just a building for our final semester, but also an idea or an ideology um, that is what I'm trying to convey 
in a way uh, the ideology is actually related to how I integrate organism as a part of the building that I'm trying to design. <clears throat> so it sort of serves as a um, as a living architecture. So we'll go to the first slide. So my my design or my building or my project for this semester is actually uh, separated into two parts, which is the first one, part one, the speculations and the nucleus. Essentially, the speculations is a speculative design of a homeless shelter that uh, serves the purpose of trying to solve the unemployment issue of the homeless people in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, essentially, it, it is it acts as the nucleus for the next idea to come, which is related to part two. Um, why I said nucleus is because it is the first of its kind, um, a living architecture essentially. Okay, so um, it is also the project is also related to designing a, a homeless center that reflects uh, the homeless resident as a part of the organism itself or a part of the nucleus itself, um, living mutually alongside um, the entity, uh, the nucleus. Uh, as well as the homeless people. And then, uh, so we'll go to the next slide. So what I'm trying to tell here is that um, currently in our world's population is that um, in urban population, um, there's a growth, uh, an emergence of a growth spur that constantly increasing uh, through the decade. And it is expected that in 2050, um, the population in an urban settings could be double the amount of the current situation. So when that happens, when this intense urbanization happens, um, there's a lot more pollutions or a lot more problems actually will occur, especially when it comes to environmental and also the problems or issues that related to humans or the peoples uh, that actually populate that certain uh, urban context. So I'm trying to, my, my design is trying to um, sort of experimentally trying to solve that two main issue, which is overpopulations as well as um, the pollutions. So when I'm trying to uh, solve this issue, I need to narrow down on, on the issue much more which is then uh, reflects in my um, project, which is the, the first issue, which is overpopulations, uh, which then related back to why uh, homeless uh, actually happens. So when there's a lot more uh, populations, uh, there's going to be less um, shift and stable between economy. So people will not be able to get jobs as frequently as um, be able to uh, obtain jobs. So um, when that happened, uh, a sudden emergence of a high and increased number of homeless happens, especially during this pandemic situations, a lot more people are becoming homeless. Then I'm trying to also capture to the environmental uh, issue, which is the how the urban becomes much more populated with people and hence there's a much more bigger emissions of carbon dioxide being uh, emitted to the environment, to the air. Um, so I'm trying to solve that in a way. Uh, I'm trying to exchange that carbon dioxide into something that we can consume or something that we can live by. So in order to do that, we, I'm, I'm trying to think of a medium in which uh, that can be done. So this is um, what I meant by the homeless situations or how there's an emergence of um, uh, sudden emergence of homeless people uh, become uh, a lot more, sorry, a lot more people becoming homeless because of the economy, social, as well as the cost of living in the urban. <clears throat> so tackling this issue, I come up with uh, a design speculations, which is the nucleus. So this is some of the sketches, early sketches on how I depict or how I translate the idea into 
my design directions. So this is the design issues. So this is the, the main issue is the main issue for the uh, my home the center is unemployment and reemployment. So uh, that is the main issue. And then there's also some minor issues that related to it as well as some sub issues that can be tackled when designing the spaces. So uh, and then so what I come up with is a space called the market of labor. Essentially, market labor is an exchange of uh, it's a market that it's not really meant for you to exchange uh, sorry meant to sell or exchange resources but more towards exchanging people or uh, it is essentially a solutions to em uh, employment so it is mark a market that serves the purpose of uh, interviewing the homeless uh, people for them to be able to be employed by uh, a company or an outside company. So the company or uh, will send a volunteer that uh, will go to the uh, to the interviewing spaces and uh, do this market of labor and they will interview the homeless people that actually live there for them to be able to hire and get a job. So that's one the idea. So uh, also in this in this uh, particular uh, slides, I also trying to convey the idea of building as an organism that living alongside the humans. So um, how this is one of the few sketches that I'm trying to depict how uh, the the actual building as a structure, and then you have a, sort of an organism that actually attached to the uh, to the to the structure uh, like an organism. So it's sort of growing alongside the humans and giving benefits mutually towards each other. It's uh, and also this this particular uh, design actually emphasizes on the juxtaposition element in architecture. So okay, so other than the market of labor, I also come up with the idea of the everyday market, which is essentially you have the normal market down below and you have the interviewing market up on the second level, which is how I depict in this sketch uh, of having an interviewing bubbles uh, on the higher level and then you have the normal market on the bottom level. So the interviewing bubbles serve as a uh, place for them to get employed, for the homeless to get employed and how uh, they're able to interact with different companies, uh, volunteers uh, and get jobs. and uh, and. On the, the higher level, there's also other um, spaces that actually helps with this uh, employment um, program. So we have the, this is called the market selection process. So essentially what happened is that the, the homeless people will go through a cycle of tutoring session for them to be able to gain skills uh, so that during the interviewing selection process, uh, they able to show that they are worth for the company to hire. Okay, so now I'll be explaining my uh, architectural uh, sort of idea on um, <clears throat> on my direction, which is uh, based on the study of biomimicry. So from what I gather from my study is that biomimicry consists of three stages, three phases. The first one was the, uh, is the structural biomimicry in 1950s. Uh, it was um, a type of biomimicry that focused on the growth of form and the grand spans of structural tectonics, more towards the construction of a certain dynamic form rather than uh, a very um, uh, a very bio-integrated design. Uh, this is one of the, the first phase actually shows the uh, TWA flood center by Eris Lernan. Um, and then we have the second phase, which is morphological biomimicry um, from 1970s to 2003. So this type of biomimicry actually uh, focus on the design of a building that actually resembles or mimicking an animal or a sea creature. For example, uh, the design of an art museum by Peter Cook. Um, this uh, design actually 
one of the main inspirations for my work. And then we have the third phase, which is environmental biomimicry um, in 1998. Um, uh, the, the thing about this environmental biomimicry is that it focuses on using a very a structural and environmental aspect um, that, that focus on the experimental of uh, different material and the usage of that set new material in response to the surrounding climates. Um, all the, from what I've gathered is that all three biomimicry have their own ideology as well as their own understanding of how they relate um, architecture with nature. Um, but I wanted to go slightly even further than that. I wanted to come up with an idea of um, uh, a combination of all three biomimicry phases and slightly even further than that. So I wanted to design a, a building that actually able to have a structure uh, and it consists of a structure and a material that can grow and sustain itself without having to uh, interchange or maintain uh, the structure or the, the sorry the material that grow by itself also able to benefit the people surrounding the area so it's sort of a, a living architecture or a, a, an architecture that resembles an organism or an organism that is uh, served as a building so this is some of the sketches of that set idea at first i was like trying to um trying to come up with an idea that resembles the the, the direction of biomimicry so there's a lot of um different aspect of the previous mentioned biomimicry in the sketches and this is one of the few uh, final sketches that i did uh, before i'm actually going to the next phase which is the 3d 3d model so uh, i've come up with an idea of having parts having something that is floating and then an idea that have uh, multiple the building itself is like floating uh, above ground and then have multiple air wells or light wells that serve uh, to reduce the amount of light and be able to constantly have uh, ventilation throughout the building so that it could be as naturally as possible or naturally um, relationship between the environment as possible. So, and then we'll go to some of my uh, sketches that I've done with the floor plans, trying to understand how to actually get the so this sort of this direction that I've had in mind, but I couldn't actually come up with a particular solid direction. So I've gone through multiple different progress of idea that I, that I, I scratch and like try to re, uh, try to redo uh, scratch and redo and scratch and redo. So the idea itself is um, for me, it is not just something that I found in in internet and I could simply depict or simply um, uh, copy and uh, make it my own. It's more of a, a thought process or an idea or an, an imagination that I had, but I couldn't produce it as of yet. So I've gone through uh, multiple discussion with my tutor as well as a few of my seniors regarding uh, how I could depict this idea. So I've gone through a few process with the uh, 3D as well. So the first initial idea was actually having a solid block and then you have a solid block uh, as you can see on the left side of the screen. Um, the first picture actually uh, shows a solid block and I, I sketch like uh, um, like a parasitic uh, organism actually attached to that uh, block. And then I have a different uh, organic morphology on the second uh, image. And then I uh, keep on 
keep on progressing a new idea, a new idea until I go to the fourth image, which is an idea of what if I show that drawing effect, but on a different platform. So I don't really use the building, uh, the, the, the actual building or the, the nucleus um, as the um, drawing uh, to show that uh, it is a living organism that is attached to the building. So uh, I've come up with the idea of, um, sorry, I've come up with the idea of trying to sort of separate that two entities so, uh, in a different timeline, essentially. So you have the nucleus, which is the homeless center as the first part of the process. And you have the, the growth phenomena that uh, I name it the growth phenomena, which is the second part of the process or the second part of the, uh, the process in the timeline. So um, so the next image is, this is basically the design that I did in 08, uh, which is my final design. So you, uh, as you can see, this is the interior perspective of the market of labor, as well as the everyday market. Uh, so you, you can see uh, on the ground floor, there's a lot of uh, depict in an oval shape uh, and a very um, organic look. For the inside of the uh, uh, building, this is a little cell uh, translation. from a fungi, the left side uh, into two parts, which consists of the facade, the first floor, the ground floor, as well as the relationship between the ground floor and the landscape area, as well as the structure frames of the building. So this is the elevations as well as the uh, section uh, of the building. So you can see the section of the building shows mainly the market of labor because that is the the main thing that I wanted to highlight for my building. So the market of labor is, uh, I, I try to do as detailed as possible in order to make people understand how it works and how uh, it is uh, shown uh, in the 3D. Okay, this is my section, sectional uh, detail. Um, uh, this is, uh, as you guys can see, the the thick layer outside of the building is actually the organism or the living fungi that I use. Uh, it, it is an experimental material uh, for my design, but uh, from what I've studied uh, and gathered uh, the information on, the mycelium is actually a very good alternative material for us to use uh, uh, as, uh, as a as a very flexible uh, material that can sustain itself. I'll further, uh, I'll, I'll tell detail on that material in uh, the next slide. But uh, for this section, uh, I highlighted a few, a few areas, which is the skylight, the mycelium wall, and the water, uh, rainwater downpipe, as well as aluminum frames, and most of the interior uh, parts of the building, which is the interviewing bubbles, as well as um, how it is connected to the um, ceiling and how the space frame is actually uh, laid out uh, throughout the building skin. And the mycelium actually is sitting on top of the um, is sitting on top of the space frame, uh, and and the space frame is maintaining the shape of the building. So this is a much more detailed uh, section for it. So you can see the mycelium facade and the roof and the skylight, as well as the space frame roof structure. Uh, and then a few other details uh, in the constructions. Right, now we'll go to part two, which is the growth phenomena. So from this point onward, I'll be talking about an experimental idea or a speculative idea of the adaptations of the mycelium 
fungi uh, into something that is even more uh, than just a material. So the, if the, the speculations of adaptations of mycelium uh, from my point of view is that the mycelium able to expand um, sorry, the, uh, the, 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 the mycelium able to expand itself into something that even more uh, beneficial to people in the urban settings. So part two is focus, uh, focuses on the expansion of that idea by interpreting the fungi as an organism that constantly grows. Uh, throughout the city, creating crevices, platforms, and as well as spaces and shelters for the people that is, for the homeless people to be able to use. And the fungi also actually serve as a medium to exchange or to, for an exchange of air between carbon dioxide and oxygen to occur. Uh, just like uh, when you have a plant or any trees, uh, able to do that exchange of air. So this idea uh, that I'm trying to introduce, it's sort of uh, in a way solving the issue that I mentioned before with the urbanizations of our populations as well as the emissions of carbon dioxide throughout the city. So this is, um, so right now I'm trying to um, show the uh, president study or not president study but more of my um, inspirations for the idea as well as the inspirations for my architectural directions of or the architectural design directions so this is one of the work by uh, by a site art student so this work what fascinates me with this work is actually how the structure of the building is very rigid and then you have this sort of almost parasitic like structure attached to the building and it seems very seamless. Um, when I was trying to depict this idea in a, in a 3D software, it is quite hard because I've never done it and, and, and the, 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 how, how they show it in the um, in this photo is that each component of the organism is actually very fluid or sorry very subject uh, very different than each other it doesn't really have a module or a component so it's very hard for me to understand how does it actually work so the next one is actually a work by Barry Work uh, uh, it is uh, my inspirations for the idea of the growing effect how he showed in his work, uh, one of the work is a collaboration work that reimagined the architectural facade uh, uh, as a as a uh, that is using uh, a concrete um, that using a bio concrete. How the concrete able to uh, repair itself and being a very um, interesting interesting material. And then we have a few more, which is the glass. Glasgow School of Art Extension, which is uh, a, a re reimagine of uh, historic uh, architectural styles into a much more modern and morphing bio-integrated design. And then we have Grotto, which is one of the few exploration work that he did uh, for a biophilic direction. And then we have one of the famous um, lecturers in UCL Butler, which is Marcos Cruz with his work uh, that is usually depict, um, uh, that is usually related to algae, how his ideology is that he wanted uh, an architecture that could grow by itself without having any, uh, without having much resources. So, for example, one of his early ideas is to have a seed that is able to be planted and then the seed will grow into a chair or into a city. So those are one of the few uh, early ideas that he had. And what fascinates me is that how his idea have been constantly growing. And right now, uh, the research that he has done could actually prove that 
this ideology could be made into reality. So this is the mycelium roots or the actual dissection of the mycelium being shown uh, in a much more detailed uh, fashion. So essentially this biotechnology, this mycelium able to build bridges between nature and technology and mycelium can be uh, uh, that is shown here also has a property that it can grow as fast as, as uh, it can grow uh, very quickly and become a binding agent for a lot of um, things such as furniture as well as walls as well as other things that we use uh, platforms um, public spaces landscapes so um, uh, there's a lot of usage for this mycelium and also from what I've gathered, what I've studied is that most of the mycelium uh, blocks that have been created from uh, uh, merging of composite material, uh, composite recycled material as well as the mycelium fungi into uh, the mycelium block, the block itself is actually very lightweight and the, the block also proved to be very uh, 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 much more durable material than most of the experimental material that has been used before. The, the blocks also prove that it can sustain fi uh, from fire and as well as it could also prevent coal, uh, sorry, it can also survive from a cold climate um, context or situations. Next, this is one of the few um, uh, precedent study that I've done which is one of the installation that was done in New York. So it is a living um, installations of a uh, skylight well. So um, what this uh, installation trying to depict is that how they are able to, uh, to make this structure of consist of blocks and blocks, multiple hundreds, thousands of blocks of mycelium that actually able to grow a strands of uh, sort of cells between each block that makes them become a very strong uh, installations. So this installation essentially um, doesn't really need cement or concrete for it to attach to each other. They just need to be able to rest and grow towards each other. Okay. So this is one of the uh, installation too, which is an installation that shows the strength uh, durability of the uh, mycelium. They actually experimented a lot of different climates. They let the insulation stay um, for quite a few periods of time, a uh, few years, for them to be able to uh, gauge the um, durability of that set mycelium mushroom uh, walls. So this is one of the new newest installation which happens in 2017. This installation actually shows the potential of mycelium as a composite uh, a molding um, uh, molding filament or uh, when, how, how it works is that uh, they, get, they have a mold for a certain form uh, printed out uh, in a plastic uh, material and then they actually fill up that plastic material with the mycelium fungi and eventually the mycelium fungi actually harden and grows inside of that uh, mold and when they open the mold it becomes a structure so they're able to um, componently able to sort of um, combine each of the structure uh, um, for the components to become this um, this new installations so this is uh, from one of the students in New York, um, how he actually, how they actually, as a group actually um, study on the potential of mycelium as uh, a growing agent as well as, uh, as, well as uh, uh, a medium for, uh, for them to create furniture uh, out of just mushroom and, and how they can control that growth uh, so that when at a certain element or, or sorry at a certain time or a certain shape the mycelium will not grow even further 
So there's there's a lot of studies with that how they actually able to seal the mycelium in a certain shape uh, by hardening the outside of the of the of the set um, item of the product in that that they created. So, but the thing is, I don't want to seal that particular uh, mycelium. I wanted it to actually grow and bloom and become uh, and create species by just um, with just the help of uh, grids of, or guides throughout the urban landscape. So this is uh, one of my, uh, so this is one of my uh, 3D for the mycelium, how I show the blocks is how, how it works in a way how the block actually grows uh, a lot of cells and then from the cells they're able to grow even more mycelium blocks or mycelium uh, fungi uh, by 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 overgrown the 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 block itself and the well, the few I also show the few benefits of the blocks which is how it is able to help with the cooling effect for the people that actually stays inside and then it it all it is also one of the fungi that able to adapt in terms of the climate uh, which it is in and uh, and one of the main reason is for it to actually provide oxygen uh, exchange of oxygens for the people surrounding the fungi and it is uh, one of uh, the few advantages is it is lightweight strong structure as well as is it is a biodegradable material so the mycelium fungi is a composite block made out of a composite material that has been recycled and combined with the mycelium fungi, just like I said before, its main advantage is to provide a sufficient oxygen cooling effect for people inside as well as sustain uh, a sustainable facade. Conceptual visualization of the fungi growing and changing uh, from its origin original shape into something that is even more radical or even more conceptual. Uh, this is a uh, uh, in, uh, an interval series that I did, which is the 3D printed of a plastic mold. How uh, the the white the white model is actually the fungi, and then you have two different mold uh, actually sandwiched together to create this set um, uh, this set fungi or this nucleus being created. Uh, this is actually one of the first depiction of that idea. How uh, from this nucleus, which is this is actually the, uh, the the picture on the left side is actually the nucleus or the home the center and then how the fungi of the facade actually grows and constantly grow and overgrown the whole building and changing its main shape. So this is what I'm trying to do when I was looking at the inspiration images um, the I was trying to think of a way to express that idea. It's just that when I'm using that 3D model or 3D platform, uh, which is the one that I mainly use was Rhino, is that I couldn't actually produce this um, 3D. So I was talking with my tutor and we were trying to um, sort of go back and forth, was trying to um, sort of create or come up with an idea on how I could depict this idea and then I go and discuss with one of our one of my seniors which is our alumni so we've been going back and forth with the, the discussion on how to actually depict this idea that I had in mind that I have sketched a lot and then how, how uh, to create this and then we come up with this idea of showing this um, sort of uh, a 3D, a 3D smoke effect, or a sort of that that actually resembles a fungi or a mushrooms uh, being grown out, uh, from the building itself, from the nucleus essentially. That actually able to highlight the living architecture that I'm trying to uh, constantly um, depict. So this is a few of the intervals uh, from the interval series, which shows same thing too which is the growing effect and then okay this is an interval series that 
um, I'm trying to study the cells or each of the layers of cells that actually uh, inside of the uh, inside of the uh, uh, inside of the mycelium fungi. So there's uh, nine different intervals that actually shows uh, different uh, time lapse that uh, depicts the how the cell is constantly repairing and growing itself uh, to survive in different climates. So um, based on the this this actually these nine different intervals actually based on uh, a few research papers that I've read. And then, uh, so that's that's for the nine intervals. And this is actually uh, the interval series for the porous cellular layers, um, multiple layers of uh, the fungi being attached together to create this very solid um, material, a very durable that uh, able to repair itself and sustain. When one layer uh, is dying, then another a new layer is being created inside of the only uh, inside of this uh, layers of the stack of layers. Um, next, uh, this is a depiction of how the fungi is actually able to help a certain material or, or, or a certain um, a certain organism to even grow. So essentially, the fungi is a composite that able to merge with a certain material and then that material uh, the fungi will help that material to grow hence uh, the, the the interval series for this one is the replications of that fungi being created so this is uh, the first initial uh, visualizations of the growth phenomena um, and then this is the initial idea it's a bit a bit janky but yeah um, this is actually a time lapse for the whole city this is the first time that I did for the whole city. Uh, how from the nucleus, uh, the growth effect actually grows even further um, on the on the nucleus, and then it grows. It spreads the fungi. Uh, the spores of the fungi were spreading throughout the whole city. But but this the the thing about this uh, version of the time lapse for the growth phenomena is that it is not very efficient as we cannot control uh, the nature, uh, the nature of the fungi. The, the idea that I'm trying to convey is that yes, um, the fungi and us should has to have a, a, a stable or uh, the same amount of control for each other in a way that uh, depicts the mutualism relationship between each other. How um, we give the fungi freedom, but at the same time, um, not too much freedom for it to grow by itself. So I come up with a strategy of having uh, structure grids, structural grids throughout the city, which then the fungi will be able to grow by using this medium of structure so that it can control itself uh, without growing throughout um, different different parts of the, the, the city that it will lead to a lot of other problems such as like um, you don't want a, a, a fungi that actually grows on uh, in front of a street or like in front of a building or in front of a, uh, an entrance door or those kind of things. So uh, and then uh, so uh, from the from the nucleus it started to grow using the, the, the using the structure and then it will grow even further more in a way it covers the whole city but it is still being attached to the structure so this the, the final outcome uh, the final outcome of the mycelium cells overgrown throughout the entire urban landscapes and providing a naturally made species as well as, well as uh, the the mycelium uh, the growth phenomena actually <clears throat> actually is trying to detoxin the air, um, uh, the, the carbon dioxide in the air to become uh, less polluted. This is a few of the shots, uh, which is uh, very, very, um, one of the few detailed shots of the city. 
it shows the structure as well as the mycelium fungi overgrown on the structure. And then this is the a few more other shots of the city. And then this is a section of the city. Essentially what I meant by the, the overgrown fungi actually has spaces inside of it. So that spaces is going to be the new shelter for the homeless people to be able to stay inside. So when you see this in the middle, um, moment. Uh, okay, so there's a, uh, all right. Okay. Uh, so this, this structure, um, uh, this spaces, uh, through the section, as you guys can see, there's a, there's a lot of spaces throughout this, uh, nucleus. So this spaces is going to be, um, habitable spaces for the homeless people. And then, uh, and then more spaces is being created throughout the structure that has been laid out in, uh, throughout the city. And the, essentially the structure serves as a skeleton to hold the mycelium and the idea of the mycelium as a fungi and Hello Adam, are you there? Sorry, um, boleh, boleh dengar? Yeah, sure, yeah, boleh dengar. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Um, sorry, my, my computer actually, uh, sorry, my laptop uh, just died. All right, anyway. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, continuing that, um, this is the, uh, this section is an interpretation of the architectural uh, organism actually moving and growing um, and then uh, also helping saving the homeless people that shelter as well as saving the whole urban landscape from um, exchanging the carbon dioxide into oxygen. All right, um, that's all from me. Um, for, for the extra comp uh, uh, component that I'm trying to show here is that this three component is for me has potential have potential uh, in for the architectural material development for the future of architecture. One of it is ferrofluid, a potential of architecture actually uh, utilizing a magnetic fluid for the design. And then we have the second one, which is a mercury growing reaction. This is an interesting one, which is how a mercury able to react with aluminum, then the mercury will grow. Uh, a tower it will grow into a structure of some sort, then that structure is actually, people, uh, it's actually have potential for a, a, a new aspect of design or how, how the structure is, uh, can become uh, a habitable species or a habitable power. And then the next, the third one is actually uh, hyper, hyper uh, it, it is a, a hyper, hyper uh, plants that, can produce metal. So how, how this plant actually um, uh, is, is being studied is that the plant able to absorb metal from its roots and then the metal actually come out uh, or produce from uh, the tree sap or the, 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 the tree sap that is um, when 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 the when the plant is being opened or uh, being dissected uh, by by the by the researcher, they found that uh, in the tree sap, uh, it's not uh, a regular color, but instead it is in a in a very uh, weird or psychedelic uh, uh, psychedelic liquefied color, uh, and then they found out that uh, inside of the tree sap, there's a lot of um, metal uh, in its 
purest um, molecule. So then they're able to actually literally farm metal from this tree sap. This tree is actually look, uh, uh, we actually in Malaysia actually have this kind of tree. Is it that I don't really know what kind of name for them for the tree actually. All right, um, that's all for my talk today. Uh, thank you. Wow, um, I, uh, thank you very much, Adam, for that yeah, wonderful, yeah. insightful and interesting talk. Um, I'm sure there are many questions just waiting to be answered from the audience today. Uh, as explained previously, for anyone who has a question and would like to ask the speaker directly, you can go ahead and unmute, unmute your mic. Uh, you can also type in your question in the chat box idea, uh, here. And I will read it out to you uh, for, for you. It looks like there is already a question. Uh, I'm gonna read it to Adam if that's okay. Okay. Okay, Salam Adam. Can you share about your design brief for 08 and your site contacts? Okay, can? Okay, so uh, our design brief is essentially we are trying to create a homeless center that trying to solve the uh, uh, issue of homeless uh, that is uh, emerging in this current situation. So, and then the brief also stated that we will, uh, we will have to integrate this uh, we will have options to integrate one of these three uh, program which is uh, a market program you have a farming program or a food bank program so i choose the market program but then um, i wanted to explore even more because it, it the issue with this homeless is that it it, it is quite interesting because uh, it's not just um, it's not just you trying to solve the issue of the homeless, it is also you trying to solve the issue of the city, uh, the, the urban, urbanization uh, issue. So, um, because like the, the reason why people are homeless is leads back to why, uh, what is happening in urbanization. And uh, to answer that question uh, regarding context for my site is that my site actually located in in Kuala Lumpur so the site is in the center of Kuala Lumpur and uh, it is very suitable for the idea that I'm trying to come up with uh, that I have shown regarding the growth phenomena right all right hello. thank you Adam. yes hello assalamualaikum assalam ah, okay, hello um so I'm Ash, for those of you that can yeah. uh, Master 03, not Tanya Adam. Uh, when you yeah. explore your, in in ways of this organic or parametric like statement for architecture again, uh, yeah. do you tend to control the boundaries of the parameters of how that style goes in parallel with the functions and purpose of the brief and its context? If I were to understand. That would be my question. Thank you. Means that um, how I actually able to control the style of the design mm, um, in, in context to the to the function. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Right. Okay. Um, so how I did it is that's why that's one of the reason uh, why I separated the, the 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 design of the building to be. Uh, in two different parts which is we have the reality which is part one uh, the nucleus which is just the homeless center and the usage of the mycelium material and then you have part two which is this more speculative or experimentation of that uh, of that idea into a much more bigger scale so um so uh, so so um to to not to not uh, break the boundary too much, uh, I separated the two projects, or not, not the two projects, sorry, the one project into two parts, so that um, uh, it, it is still uh, comply with the, um, with, the, <clears throat> with the brief, but also able to go a little bit more further. But then uh, you were asking on how I control that architectural direction. So from my uh, view, from my view, Point or for my study too, um, 
according to part one, how I control it is that I just directly um, uh, study on the biomimicry and how I depict that biomimicry into uh, a style or, or into uh, architectural direction. And then um, in, uh, the, uh, through the usage and understanding of that biomimicry direction, I actually made it into a building. But for the, for the control of the uh, direction for the part two, which is the growth phenomena, is that um, the, 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 the control is how uh, the grid is how I actually control the idea or control the design direction because if you if just like this 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 time lapse is that uh, if the 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 growth doesn't really have a direction or doesn't really have uh, a grid or a guide that actually help them to grow um, the 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 design would be chaotic and would be all over the place instead when you have the grid you're able to uh, help that help the growing effect to guide through uh, throughout the city. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I was just interested uh, because mm -hmm. I think this is great for discussion, Lafkan. Because when it comes down to yeah. narrative, narrative, um, one thing that I tend to realize when students explore these kinds of styles is that sometimes they tend to explore more on their individual intentions on how they explore the idea rather than seeing the overall outcome. So it's great to see that you set your guidelines in accordance to the brief and then in all it pretty much incorporates the whole narrative nicely and is boxed nicely. So that, that's really great. That's really great. Good job, Adam. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go. All right. Is there any more questions you want to ask the speakers directly or I can just move on to the chat box? I'll give it um, five seconds. Okay. okay, let's move on to chat box. I'm sorry, the first question just now was asked by Alif Daniel Shamsul Akpal. And the next question is by Amirul Azim. The question said, hello, Adam. May I know how deep do you go when researching about a certain subject? Like when, when do you know at a certain point that the research is enough? That's the question. Okay, um, to answer that question is that um, for our level, which is uh, for my level, um, undergraduate or BSc level is that I think um, the study that I've done is that um, um, how to say it's um, I think at a certain level when you are studying a certain material or a certain uh, ideology uh, and things like that there will be there will never be that point of uh, okay this is enough because there's always new things you will come come across uh, uh, so I think um, but then but then um, you need to also focus on the things that you wanted to do. Means that um, when you're studying a certain uh, a certain research or a certain thesis or a certain uh, books, um, you also uh, you you must be wanted to do your own product juga. So you wanted to produce your own uh, work. So my my advice would be um, make sure that both of that the the study as well as the the um, the product that you're you're trying to do uh, comes together it uh, means that you're doing it um, uh, simultaneously so that in a way that, that you uh, the, the product that you're doing is the one that's saying okay this is enough this is uh, you have done enough research I think uh, the product can actually finish sort of so the product is uh, the one that is telling you that okay this is enough so when, when you're asking about the limit I think um, uh, it, it is determined by the product that you're trying to do or the design or the architectural ideology that you're trying to research on, uh, sorry, trying to do. All right. So uh, you're saying like, just follow your guts, is that it? 
no no it's not follow your guts but it's more like uh, um the essentially when when you're studying about something you may, must have that um that uh the uh, drive or that intention to create something or to produce something so that production or that things that you wanted to produce is the one that um that is determining determine the determine whether you wanted to stop or you wanted to keep on moving uh in terms of your research study because like for example um you wanted to design uh, a building that could grow um by using the mercury that i mentioned before so you were trying to do a lot of research regarding that and then at one point you realize that oh this can be done so that and then you show a simulations of that and stuff like that but then you felt like um uh, you felt like you have gotten enough uh, information for uh, to justify that work so i think um one of the key points is that justifications are when you have already um be able to justify your work is when i think the research side is enough is enough and you can stop that research and move on to um, developing your product pula at that point all right because like um study right. is sorry. your study is for you to gain uh yeah sorry uh your study is for you to gain knowledge in justifying your work as well as um your further deeper understanding of the product that you're trying to do all right All right, thank you so much Adam. Ah, so kasi ni na. Na isa kay Igo first. Ah, uh, I have two question. Uh, first, okay. uh, uh, I want I would like to congratulate Adam for delivering such a uh, great work. Thank notes. you. <laughs> uh, okay. So my first question is, um, do you have any objections throughout uh, your <coughs> entire semester? Eight? like macam masih kreat or masih tutor ada tak yang macam lecturer or any uh, tutors yang object your ideas uh, and if uh, you have facing that situation how do you uh, preserve uh, your intention and your own goals <coughs> uh, and okay. then for my second question uh, mm-hmm. macam I have been following your works for quite some time uh, and I've seen you stick to uh, your very principle kan so do you have any macam your future uh, intention of uh, studying for your masters macam apa your specific subject yang you nak pursue <coughs> with uh, macam relation to your future so uh, that's all thank you all right all right all right um thank you as one okay i'll answer the second question first because it's a very short uh, question Um so um uh, in terms of like the direction or my future studies that I wanted to do is probably um something related to what Marcos Cruz actually um was um was studying uh he has been trying to do biointegrated design in Butler University and he he is trying to depict this idea of living organism as a part of the building and i think i've always been doing that same idea is it that i've never found him until um uh, one of my seniors actually mentioned him and i've done a few studies on him and and i think um a part of me i've always been looking at architecture as um its own entity uh, it's not just about creating a building it's about an ideology too So I think I would pursue that um particular um particular direction in terms of my uh for the studies. Okay. Uh hi. I'm Hazrini from uh MO4. So I just want to ask in relation to your um explanation towards the biomimicry and uh this part of your the design throughout the design process. I just want to ask in how you relate the growth of the fungi and all that invention to your site contacts towards the homeless um, uh, issues or debris for zero eight thank you 
Okay, so um, I think this one actually goes back to the uh, the side context. Uh, how I relate is that through the uh, issue that have been mentioned, which is the unemployment issues, and then um, yeah. So uh, how I relate is actually through the unemployment issues. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, through the unemployment issue and then relate back to the homeless and then how the homeless actually needing a shelter uh, for them to, 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 to be able to use. So um, the relation is not very direct, but it's more of a uh, relation of a relations uh, of an issue. So um, how I relate it back is how uh, the homeless center is being depicted as this nucleus that is trying to start a movement so the uh, the side contact is that we're in the middle of a Kuala Lumpur so this uh, homeless center could be that nucleus that actually solved the issue of the homeless throughout Kuala Lumpur so when you ask um, the how the living um, architecture actually relate back to the context is that uh, the only way I could answer that is um, is that uh, it relates in a bigger scale, which is throughout the Kuala Lumpur as a whole city that fulls of uh, homeless centers. So the the idea to solve that issue uh, is relate back to the living architecture that I'm trying to do. I see. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Um, let's move on to the chat box. There is a question from Asri Amal. Salam. Mm -hmm. How did your studio master react to your proposal conceptually and structurally? Okay. Mm, um, okay. Uh, that one, okay. Since I've shown you the part one and part two, for the part one, actually, uh, it, it, it's just a building. Sorry. It's just a, a homeless center that utilizes um, utilize, uh, the mycelium as uh, a, a facade material. And um, I think um, since he he did not really create this, uh, crit, like he's, he he never been my panels uh, throughout the semester, so like uh, he never really um, really see my project until the end. I think like during the final submission, um, all the lecturers actually gather and the. Uh, discuss on whether my project is actually suitable for the homeless center brief or not. But at the end, um, it was justified that um, the construction was um, was uh, actually uh, good enough uh, for it to be accept, uh, accepted as a part of a um, homeless center uh, uh, homeless center, and then. Um, I, I actually justified the, the product of the mycelium by showing um, uh, the research studies and all those kind of things. And back even during the crit session, I've shown a few studies of the, um, of the mycelium. And so uh, it's actually helped boost uh, the, uh, the, um, the project to be accepted by the, even the studio leader. All right. Thank you, Adam. Can we have questions from the audience uh, to speak, uh, ask directly to the Adam? Okay, if there's none, let's move on to the next question in the chat box. Um, this is from Alif Daniel Shamsul Akmal. Uh, his second questions. Uh, he said, he's, he asked, perhaps you might share how your design can solve the problems of listeners and unemployment. Mm -hmm. that's, that's his question. Oh, that's the question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, so um, my, my, my design, how it solves the issue of unemployment is by having this um, interviewing pods and how it relates uh, with the program of, uh, uh, sorry, um, 
how it relates with the program um the the government and as well as the ngo are able to send volunteers of people uh, that actually goes to this homeless center for them to interview the homeless people um for them to hire uh, into their company or uh, to work with them so it it sort of uh, become a platform or a, a center that actually serve a purpose that giving jobs to the homeless so that's how i solved the issue for the unemployment but for the uh, homeless issue how i solve it is the um, even in the brief actually stated that we need to provide accommodations for the people uh, of the homeless but i think that is the accommodation is very little uh, i mean the, the amount of uh, spaces that is provided for the accommodations for the homeless is actually very 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 little so uh, i wanted to expand upon it hence the idea for the growth phenomena uh, the idea of having the mycelium as a part of uh, a, a species that is naturally created okay, that's how i solve the two issues uh, homeless and, and unemployment yeah very interesting thank you adam all right is there any questions more if there's none uh, let, i will ask uh, i mean i have my own questions um all right adam um what do you think uh the public views of your project i mean um um what i mean how public views uh uh i think sorry sorry uh what are the public views yang uh, affect your project into lah how the public view affect your project right you mean you mean you you meant uh like um how the public like how the public views my project in the past or how the how i would expect the public view my project is that it yeah yeah how you expect the public to view your project i see i see i, see. I think um for um, my project as in um, how it, it is being pre presented um, especially if it is in Malaysia when you talk about um, okay I'll touch upon the material for that if you show a new material or a material that is usually a bit more experimental and but then have been applied outside overseas when you uh, show the material it is a bit hard for Malaysia economy to uh, or Malaysia itself to actually utilize that material because uh, usually the people that uh, control this um, uh, access of uh, access of material is usually um, monopoly uh, trying to control the monopoly of the economy so it's a bit hard in some of the material itself to be uh, to be to be pre presented or utilized but i think it's it has good enough study and and research that i could prove that it would be beneficial for the um for the uh, for the country to be able to utilize this 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 material in terms of the project itself um uh, the public view for the project itself i would say that um i would expect the people to question a lot of things and and i love that because it opens or it triggers their mind to actually think like is this is this possible or is this um be able to do or is this um is this um design actually uh, suitable for our climate so i love that question that uh that people have um come out with because just because of this one project and i think um it's okay for people people to criticize your project because as long as you know how to justify that work and i know how to justify my work um uh, it's, it's okay um for people to question because it also helps them to do research by themselves on that set project so i think um uh, in terms of public perspective, um, I expect people to have a lot of questions, uh, to have a lot of questions, and I, I live that. 
Mm. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on to next question from the chat box. Right. I, this is from the organizer himself. Hi, Adam. Do you mind sharing what software did you use and at what stages, components, elements do you use uh, a specific software for? That's the question. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of software, um, the thing, uh, I think this is something that needs more exposure, especially to your ITM students, uh, because your ITM has been sticking with the set, set softwares that have been uh, introduced very early um, in our production, which is Metro Toronto. Uh, you have SketchUp, AutoCAD. Uh, I think, uh, and then you have, um, like, when you have after years, you have Revit and then Rhino. All this uh, computational design software is, is actually very good for uh, for for you to to be introduced in three D modeling. But in terms of in terms of um, the software that I use for my design, is that um, I've been discussing a lot with Hazik. Uh, he is uh, one of our alumni uh, from uh, Legacy's batch. He's the one who taught me. Uh, a lot of things regarding uh, computational design. So um, we've been discussing on what kind of software for us to use, and the one that we stick on was Houdini. But uh, it's, it's uh, Houdini. It's not a three D software, but it's more of or it's more like a, um, if um, um, it's more of a effect. It, like you can create smoke effect. You can create fire effect it's like a effect uh, based software but then you can manipulate the the components inside that to be able to merge with the model that you have created from rhino or from sketchup so uh, that is the software that i use and we also actually venture on with maya with 3ds max with cinema 4d i've ventured in cinema 4d too when trying to actually trying to create that because um, at, at, at the middle stage, I was trying to like create this effect and it is so hard to do with just Rhino and then even Cinema 4D doesn't work and then um, Maya was also really hard to actually learn and then we have uh, 3ds Max and then we have um, uh, ZBrush uh, and then uh, uh, I think I, I came across um, Hazik and he said that uh, one of the best uh, one of the intriguing softwares currently um, uh, less known by people is actually Houdini. But the thing about Houdini is that it requires a lot of... Mm, it, it, it is a learning curve, I would say, in order for you to learn, as well as um, it requires a very um strong uh medium as in like your pc needs to be very good la, for it to be utilized so yeah i actually use uh, the software that i use um for the if you want to know for the effect is actually houdini houdini software and but the other models is just uh, i use um i use uh Tino, and then for the rendering i use uh, keyshot <coughs> All right. That is very interesting. Uh, so uh, right now I'm op opening an opportunity for the audience to ask the speaker directly, which is very encouraged. So is there any question from the audience? No? Okay, let's move on to the next question in the chat box. This one is from Ridwan Naim. His question is, do you plan to further your studies on mycelium in the near future? That's the question. Oh, okay, for that one, I would love to further study on that, but I would also love to actually read more on the other potential of uh, material or design ideology because at the moment, I think what I'm presenting to you all is just uh, the surface. Like, I didn't even really go that deep in terms of the ideology as well as the usage of material 
like the, all this experimental material uh, and, and and i i've come across a few that i've shown at the last uh slides those materials could be a potential material that we could develop and i think for now uh, uh if you're asking me whether i wanted to go for uh, to further study on my stream yes and but i also wanted to study even more on other materials too as well as others ideology uh, and further advance the ideology of living organism as architecture yeah all right thank you thank you adam so uh, once again i'm um i'm opening the opportunity for the audience to speak to the speaker directly you not get this again is there anyone I'm giving you five seconds. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question. This is from Ayman Rizwan. His questions are, hi Adam, uh, can you explain a little bit more on the special relationship of your project design within the built environment and the urban context? Is there a planned drawing you can share with us? That is his questions. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So, Carl, if you want to see a plan drawing, uh, actually, one I think I've opened here. All right. Um, so, this is my board. You guys can see it. Can you guys see it? Yes. I think you guys can see it. All right. All right. So, this is the site plan, and then you have the actual plan of the building. Lah. Um, in terms of your, what was the question? The, the question is like related to urban context, is it? Is it? Uh, yes. The, uh, the, uh, the special relationship of your project design within the built environment and the urban context. Okay. So, um, in terms of uh, the special quality or the special relationship with the built environment, Mm, I think I think what you meant with that question is that how uh, the relationship between the spaces that I've created with the material that is with the current material or with the material that I've proposed. If that is the question, is that uh, if that is the question, um, I would answer um, mm, the 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 special special quality um, in terms of like the context itself um, the, the the building would be uh, something that is um, very eye-catching to the to the to the uh, city or the urban urban context because it is something that um, something that is uh, different than the surrounding architectural direction uh, and, but it is also my intention for it to be like that because First, I wanted to change the stigma of the homeless, and then I wanted to, well, I wanted it to also resemble a nucleus, which is a start of um, any an, an initial start of something that is even more um, interesting, or something that is uh, the the growth phenomena that I I, I shown you guys just now. Um, I don't really understand in terms of like the question regarding special quality with the built environment um if you meant by like the special quality um uh, the special quality related to built environment i'm still confused with that okay can you could you um like explain the question further regarding that ayman rizwan can we have uh some a bit clearer um explanation yeah. about your questions yeah <clears throat> you can type in so i can read yeah Ah, uh, you mean you mean uh you meant by any uh design uh 
design strategy, design strategy. I see design strategy. You mean design strategy? Okay, design strategy. Uh, I think it's mainly the same as what you did. Um, especially when it comes to floor plan, it is the same. How I studied this whole site contact, which one is the best angle, which one is the best um, understanding is uh, sorry, which one is the best view, which one is how the climate will react to the certain positions and all this kind of stuff. But I think what makes it a little bit different would be how I apply um, uh, the ideology into the plan lay uh, the plan layout. How uh, I think because like we have this stigma in our mind that a plan needs to be according to grids or according to um, a set of construction. But actually, you could go even even beyond than that. Uh, just by understanding how the fundamentals of that construction works. So, because like construction is not to restrict you, but it is a medium to help you build your idea. So you, 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 you don't have to um, stick to that set um, uh, condition. Instead, the condition actually has to follow you in a way. Do you understand that? So when you ask regarding axis and of the context and all those things, yes, I did do all those things in terms of uh, when I'm making the floor plan for the building. Hence the multiple, if you see this, multiple um, <coughs> sketches for the um, uh, progression of the work. So I have like the first idea, which is just a sketch. And then I determine where is the special quality, which part of the zoning needs to be private, which part of the zoning needs to be public. And then uh, I separated that zoning based on what kind of program I need it to be. And then, uh, and then I, oh, okay. One of the advice I would, uh, I would like to uh, point out is that why you can create, okay, you can create two different floor plans. So what I meant by that is that one floor plan is just form like like all the form that you want it to be and then one floor plan is purely um functional plan, floor plan and then uh, at one point you merge those two floor plan into one um design based floor plan which then becomes that thing that you want it to be for example one of the uh, one of the uh, for you guys um one of the one of the conceptual design was actually this one, the one that I should in uh, pointed out in red. This is a very conceptual uh, design for a, for a floor plan, and then I also I merge with this very rigid and very um, normal design for the floor plan, and it becomes this uh, on the left uh, on the left side of the. Um, the screen, which is a much more, um, you can see the spaces, but it will, it is also rich with design language. Like it looks uh, almost like an organism inside being dissected from above. So, uh, so it carries over that architectural direction that I wanted from the concept. So uh, my advice, like I said, you need to create two uh, for, from what I did is that I created two different um, floor plan. So the first one is just purely form and concept. And then you have the second one, which is purely uh, spaces and like the size of the spaces. And then I combine those both into one singular floor plan that, that uh, shows the, uh, both of the ideology in one floor plan. All right. All right, thank you, Adam. Yeah. Um, all right, so once again, I'm opening the floor for the audience to ask questions to the speakers directly. We are nearing towards the end of our session, so if you miss this chance, you will not be able to uh, ask Adam again. So please use this opportunity to ask whatever that is in mind. Okay, Assalamualaikum, Adam. Yeah, Madam Anis. <laughs> okay. All right. I really appreciate your your design. Uh, I saw it through from your zero five, 
you have a very creative and innovative in terms of ideas, very strong ideas, or it's not um, always eye catching out of the box. But I, I just want to ask because mm -hmm. you have gone through your practical training, you yes. have exposed yourself to the uh, industry. You know that yeah. the clients out there is actually mm -hmm. very rare for you to uh, find the clients that can pay or invest True. True. to True. your or to your ideas. This kind of concept, yes. yeah. Because yeah. for 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 time being, money and what's not is yeah. very important. Okay, Listen. and then True. how how you want to to deal with it? Whether you want to. Mm, to stick with your stigma like this, you always want to be different in any ways in your design or it's not or you want to to blend with the industry you want to serve what the clients want I, I just want to okay. know your opinion <laughs> All okay. right. Thank, okay. you. thank you, thank you madam Alright, that is a very um, good question by madam Anis um, um, To answer that, I would say um, my journey is not yet finished when Madame Anis was asking um, that question of how I would um, expect myself to be in the industry is that um, the industry is not just for me the industry is not just about um, the working environment because like the industry uh, you could also see the industry in uh, a much more research based uh, aspect or you could see it in a much more educational aspect and 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 i would say my journey is not over yet and i'm just this is only the beginning of what i'm trying to do and what i'm trying to reach out to the to the world actually uh, what i'm trying to show uh, the world my project is and and um, i would say that um, the 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 uh, to answer that question the um, um, what I would do is that at the moment I wanted to continue my work. I, I wanted to do even more research on it. I wanted to further develop this um, ideology that I have and further study upon it. So um, I I will pursue. Um, for now, my my goal is to pursue um, somewhere that could accept this study or this research based. Um, uh, ideology um, and uh, I, so that I could even further develop it even more and eventually I believe this is why my belief in the future we would be able to use this type of architectural direction or architecture um, uh, bio-integrated design especially uh, uh, as a common uh, medium for us to help, um, um, uh, sorry, not to help, for us to actually um, live among this by integrated design as a part of a very common context in the urban setting. Because, um, because even now in overseas, there's a lot of this kind of research-based idea and they have, have been developing it. It's just that we, we are not exposed to this kind of uh, architectural works because um, uh, our, our industry is being monopolized by uh, a lot of the higher up, so they don't, don't want to expose us to this new innovative idea because they, it's all about the money. Lah. But that, was, that is another matter. Uh, but in terms of Madam Anis' question, I would say um, instead of pursuing the industry, I would pursue my own work. I mean, I would pursue uh, even more research and study-based um, uh, future. For my own yeah all right good thank you adam i wish you best thank of you luck. Okay, madam. Never all right picture or maybe norman foster <laughs> <laughs> so. all, right. all the best adam okay uh, okay. okay and and right. just uh just to inform others your your juniors are all here um adam is actually um is this rare rare if 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 i i would say that among all the students adam is rare sebab kalau you tengok um, his design is always come with a concept very strong concept detailing very detailing um ada sedikit waktu dulu 05 ada sedikit um 
um, problem in term of uh, spatial organization and functionality. Tapi it is very creative because he think out of the box. Kalau orang lain mungkin fikir, oh ini kena ke sini, ke sini, ke sini. Tak, dia fikir lain. So sometimes to be creative and innovative is something good that you need to actually try to develop in any way semua arkitek kena ada that 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 knowledge or that skills ah uh, yes you have to develop so um, all the best adam gula okay. <laughs> itu je Abilah macam cilium ramai pula selepas ni macam cilium semua ni Haa, jangan macam tu, jangan macam tu Kerisauan dia kan Adam, kerisauan air Matematik semua kan? selepas ni habis, begini uh, Kan, kan, <laughs> kerisauan dia adalah uh, If you want to to practice kan, if you want mm, to practice mm, You, mm. you orang akan dictate you punya design tau So, yeah, dia akan yeah. terus akan jadi um, monotonous, benda tu mm. orang take take it out macam oh ini tak nak this element because yeah. uh, ini kita nak uh, apa ni uh, save save money in term of that one or oh, kita tak nak macam yeah. ni concept be very yeah. too ambitious or whatever kan mm. but it's good that you said just now you want to develop further kalau you belajar overseas kan AA kan, kan maybe so kalau macam oh, tak? you know that those people will really appreciate your ideas like this because dia lebih kepada bukan setakat sekarang it's go beyond Futuristic, something like that. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Banyak pula cakap. Alright, itu lah Adam. Okay, thank you. Alright, thank you Adam for answering and thank you Madam Anis for the questions and encouragement. Uh, let's all wish Adam a good luck, a very good luck. So I'm sure many of us would love to have uh, such an iconic and interesting building here in Malaysia. Okay, so yeah, let's yeah. move on to the next questions. This one is, is the is from Chatbox from Muhammad Hazi. Uh, his questions are, is, um, Hi Adam, interesting project. I would like to know if the material, mycelium itself, is very much suitable to the tropical climate in Malaysia, as in the growth rate itself within a mountainous climate in Malaysia, considering we do not, we do not experience the four seasons. If so, how would the material be suitable to Malaysia as compared to, let's say, a country experiencing the four seasons? That is his questions. Okay, so um, based on his question, uh, the, the main point, okay, okay, based on the research or the study that I've done with the mycelium is that um, one of the character that this mycelium fungi actually has is that they're able to adapt in terms of the climate change that is um, um, that uh, that actually being uh, represented on them, uh, so they're able to respond and change and adapt according to the climate climate that they're in. So um, when you put it that way, um, I believe that uh, even in our current climate, uh, which is our uh, we we are a different we we don't have that four season. Uh, we're more in the Katulistiwa punya climate. Um, I believe that the uh, the mycelium would still be able to thrive. It's just that the growth rate would be a little bit uh, different rather than compared to when it is in a four season uh, four season country, because the growth rate, um, like you said, you mentioned, the growth rate will be um, uh, depending on how how the uh, the fungi actually adapts to that situations so if if it is able to adapt and understand and it will able to evolve uh, according to the climate change surrounding them then uh, uh, even though uh, at the initial start the nucleus might uh, grow a little bit more slower but then uh, as it grow uh, as it grows even uh, as it as it able to adapt and evolve the grow uh, eventually the growth rate will get uh, in a certain uh, position that it will become constantly, uh, con- the rate will become constant and the growth will become consistent. So I believe that there is a, there is a possibility that um, the mycelium could be utilized uh, in, uh, in our country. Because um, one of the, I, I did saw one of the projects 
from uh, an installation using mycelium that is located in Australia. So if the mycelium is able to live in Australia, then Australia doesn't really have much of a difference compared to our country. Uh, uh, there's a, a little bit of different climate, but uh, overall, Australia is actually kind of like um, Malaysia. So there, uh, there is all the proof of study for that particular um, um, particular uh, installation. So I believe it is possible for mycelium to grow in our country. Right. Right. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. And I think everyone right. can take note on that mini sharing discussion. So it would benefit all of us. Okay. Yeah. So um, before we end our session today, is, is there any last questions from the audience? Let me give it like a few seconds for you guys to ask. Last question. All right, I think it's, uh, that's all the questions that we have. Okay, I want to thank everyone for the questions asked and also Adam for helping us understand the bigger picture and explain a few unanswered subjects. Right. With that, all right, with that, uh, unfortunately, that marks the end of our session for today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining us this evening talk. Thank you for the lecturers who have joined our sharing session this evening. And of course, I would like to thank our speaker, Adam Ikhwan from Andalusia Studio for giving us an inspiring sharing session with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So for more updates and info regarding the right. schedule of uh, Checkmate Architectural Review and regarding the Architalks, you may visit our Instagram page at Namada Studio uh, which will be linked in the chat box. Uh, you can also support us by checking out our merchandise, uh, which is linked in the bio of our Instagram page. You can also check out Adam's socials, which will also be linked in the chat box, as well as Andalusia Studios' Instagram page. Again, thank you very much for joining us today. It pains me to say goodbye, so we hope to see you guys again in the future talks. On behalf of Checkmate Architectural Review, we sincerely apologize for any inconveniences that have or may happen in the not too distant future. We will end this night with Tasbih Kifarah and Suratul Wal As.